Okay, let's meditate for a few minutes. Anam Bhavana Sapakna. Close your eyes and pay attention to your breath. Try to be with a sensation of breathing all the way through the in-breath, all the way through the out. Start with some good long, deep in-and-out breaths. And then if the long breathing feels good, keep it up. If it doesn't, you can change. You can make the breath shorter, deeper, more shallow, heavier, lighter, faster, slower. There's lots of variations to the breath, and they're all going to have a different impact on the body. So what kind of impact would you like to have right now? If you're feeling tired, what kind of breathing will give you more energy? If you're feeling tense, what kind of breathing will relax you? Try to find out. The breath is like free medicine. But it's not advertised, and it does take some skill. It's not like going to the doctor, and the doctor can't just give you a shot of good breath. It's something you have to do. You have to train the mind in order to get the breathing just right for the body. And that's the important part of the meditation. We're here not to get the breath so much as we're here to get the mind, because the mind does need to be trained. As the Buddha said, this is the difference between a fool and a wise person, is the wise person sees the need for training the mind, whereas the fool doesn't. The wise person realizes that you can live with the best circumstances possible and still make yourself miserable, because the mind hasn't been trained. And so we show some respect for the power of the mind by trying to train it. You notice that we bow down a lot here. That's because we have respect for the Buddha. Why do we have respect for the Buddha? Because he teaches us to respect something worthy of respect inside ourselves, which is our desire for true happiness. A happiness that doesn't change on us, a happiness that doesn't cause anybody any trouble. The world outside says that that kind of happiness is impossible. They try to sell you on whatever pleasures they can put out for sale. But the Buddha says, no, you respect the fact that you want a true happiness, and then live your life in a way that's in line with that desire. That's going to require training the mind, because the mind is the source of all your actions. And if you lack mindfulness, if you're not alert to what you're doing, if you forget that true happiness is possible, then you can end up doing all sorts of things that you later regret. So training the mind protects you in lots of ways. You begin to see the power of the mind. You begin to see the importance of the mind. And you begin to wonder, maybe the Buddha's right. Maybe a true happiness is possible. What well, comes from getting the mind under control. So I tell you to stay with the breath. If you're just said, stay with the breath and don't move, of course the first thing you're going to do is move. The mind's going to go wandering off. But if you tell the mind that the breath has some potential here for giving rise to sense well-being in the body, when there's well-being in the body, then the mind is a lot more pliable, a lot easier to get along with. So. Do some research into this free medicine here, the medicine that can soothe you when you need to be soothed, that can give you energy when you need energy. They can make sure that everything circulates well in the body. If you pay attention here, there are lots of potentials, and you'll find that in getting interested in the breath getting some control over the breath, you begin to get some control over your own mind. And then you can direct it in the direction where you really want it. <laughs>